Ladies and gentlemen, today we are talking about Cardano, and more specifically, what I believe to be one of the key elements for Cardano's continued growth in the space and a return to positive price action. Now, if you like Cardano or you just love crypto, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get a heads up whenever I post new crypto content every single week. Now, in my mind, Cardano has the tools and the framework in place to be competitive in the long term in this space, and crypto is a long game, as we all know. We've probably been here a while. What Cardano needs is the scale, the scalability to handle the growing demand that it has and will continue to see from its users in terms of transaction throughput. Now, it's no secret that with the launch of decentralized exchanges and NFTs and all sorts of projects on Cardano, congestion has started to become an issue. That said, there is an undeniable need for scalability both at the layer one level, so on the Cardano mainnet itself, as well as with layer two technologies that can support a variety of decentralized applications on the network. This will be key to Cardano's growth. I'm gonna break down the major scaling solutions that are coming down the pike for Cardano so you know what the road ahead looks like on that front and where we're going from here. So first, let's briefly talk about the layer one or the main Cardano blockchain and the scaling solutions that are in the works to raise the overall transaction throughput and performance of that base layer blockchain. There are a few parameters that can be used as levers to pull on a blockchain network to do this. And for Cardano, a couple of these are block size and script memory capacity. To be clear, block size refers to the actual size and bytes of blocks of transactions that get appended to the blockchain on a consensus cadence. And larger blocks means more transactions per block in general. Script memory, on the other hand, is a parameter that sets the max memory capacity for a given Plutus smart contract script, and more memory means, again, generally more complex, flexible, and performant smart contracts. In fact, the script memory parameter was just raised recently, depending on when you are watching this video. In combination with the smart contract execution environment making more efficient use of that memory, this efficiency as well and higher capacity can have a significant effect on scale. That said, you can't just start raising these parameters willy-nilly because there are diminishing returns and consequences, negative consequences to pushing these too far. However, there are other methodologies that can be employed on the main network, the main chain to help here. First of all, there's a new feature for making the process of propagating blocks of transactions through the network that should help uh, the network become more efficient, if you will. And this feature is called pipelining, and it was outlined in a blog post from IOHK in January of 2022, and I've actually talked about it on the channel before. But to make this feature really simple to understand, pipelining simply makes the processes involved in propagating blocks happen concurrently with overlap so that these processes can complete more efficiently. In short, the new and efficient process for block propagation gives Cardano more room to scale and more headroom to accommodate bigger blocks and bigger scripts later on if needed. So it raises that threshold for those parameters. And people also forget that scalability isn't all about speed or transaction throughput alone, but also about other intangibles like memory usage for a node in the network or storage of state data for the blockchain. And so Cardano already has plans to make the actual node implementation more efficient at the core for things like memory usage, computation, and more including the ability for nodes to store state data for the blockchain on disk, reducing the need for significant memory capacity and usage for node clients. Scaling on the base layer is always a balancing act, pushing transaction throughput through parameter changes and efficiency improvements to the core operative components without compromising security or introducing untenable requirements on node clients like massive storage volumes, huge memory capacity, or compute resources in general for those running hardware. A theme you'll continue to see in this space is that, like Ethereum, major blockchain ecosystems are shifting towards being L2-centric, where the day-to-day -day brunt of the volume of transactions are done on layer two networks that are focused on cost efficiency and scalability rather than on that main layer one blockchain. That said, let's shift our focus to some of the amazing work being done in that layer two or sidechain space in the world of Cardano. Now, in this case, that distinction may not be totally clear between layer one and layer two. So you can think about it this way. I like to draw parallels to Ethereum because a lot of people know about it. So if you think about Ethereum as the layer one, you have Arbitrum and Optimism, ZK Sync and other networks as layer twos that sit above that blockchain 
to handle more transaction load day to day. These layer two networks handle the general transaction volume for dApps and derive their security from the main blockchain by relying on its security guarantees and consensus finality, etc. Cardano is no different than this. And one of the most exciting developments in the Cardano space is Hydra, which is the tailor-made layer two scaling solution for Cardano itself. Now, Hydra is a protocol that allows the dynamic creation of Hydra heads, which are basically mini networks that share the fundamental properties and operations of the Cardano blockchain and can run in parallel for a set of participants in that channel or Hydra head. As more throughput is required on Cardano, more Hydra heads can be spawned to handle rapid, low cost transactions at scale. And this protocol is designed to provide Cardano the ability to scale to virtually any degree required for users on the network based on demand. So it's not about reaching some hallmark number like a million transactions per second, that's marketing. It's about scaling to meet the demand on Cardano without having to sacrifice security. Now, if you're the type of person who likes to know the technical terms behind things, I'll keep this brief, but Hydra is based on the concept of isomorphic state channels, which basically means that the state channels or Hydra heads as they're called are in the form of the Cardano mainnet in structure and operation. The core operative word here is isomorphism, which in computer science is basically a fancy way of describing behavioral equivalence, meaning the Hydra heads or isomorphic state channels in the Hydra solution will function like a mini version of the Cardano network for the participants that join that state channel. And that's the simplified version of what this all means. The resounding concern and consistent FUD around this though, for Cardano haters in particular, is that Hydra is not capable of scaling specific areas of the ecosystem like DeFi. And this is in part due to the design characteristics of Hydra, because it is by nature a state channel with defined participants, not arbitrary open smart contract interactions like you'd see in DeFi protocols. And this is factually true. This as written as the spec is written for Hydra, it doesn't really lend itself to DeFi. But attention has already shifted towards iteration on top of that body of work to build towards the goal of supporting DeFi better in Hydra. Of course, much like other ecosystems, Cardano also has a rich third party ecosystem of solutions for this that will take on decentralized application load just fine. So if you followed the hot topics in the world of Ethereum, which you should, by the way, it's a great barometer for what's going on around the space. You'll know that zero knowledge proofs and ZK rollups as a means for scaling on the layer two is like the crown jewel for many seeking to build sustainable long term dApps at scale and for DeFi in particular. Projects like ZK Sync are in the early stages, but have already brought a ton of attention to the L2 centric Ethereum ecosystem as potential relief from gas fees and congestion. And Cardano is now a benefactor for the ZK rollup research as well with projects like Orbis or Orbis. I'm not sure how to pronounce it working to bring this tech to the Cardano ecosystem as well. By the way, as a nice little explanation of what ZK rollups are, you basically scale by rolling up or bundling transactions and then submitting a proof using zero knowledge technology to the main layer one blockchain for verification. So this lets you bundle larger sets of transactions and provide finality in one go, helping scale and maintain security and finality along the way. Anyway, back to Orbis or Orbis, which is designed in and of itself to provide an off-chain layer two platform, which Cardano's DeFi ecosystem can use to thrive. Orbis will pro provide the standard prover and verifier model where the prover bundles up transactions that happen on the layer two and generates a signed proof representing those transactions and their results to be submitted to the Cardano mainnet blockchain. And then the verifier on the other hand is a smart contract that provides settlement and verification of those off chain transaction bundles in the roll up. We're in highly simplified territory here, but if you want to dive deeper into this, please check out the link in the description to learn more. Of course, Orbis or Orbis will support the native scripting languages for smart contracts on Cardano, such that developers of DeFi protocols can port their dApps to the protocol. There's a lot of complexity in building these ZK rollups for prime time, and there's going to be kinks to work out, but it will be a critical piece of the puzzle in terms of scaling Cardano's ecosystem as well as others in the space as well. And I will also say that Orbeez will certainly not be the only ZK rollup layer two solution for Cardano. More of them will come, but there is also a sidechain project that's worth noting in this video. So let's shift focus over there. 
and among the most hotly anticipated third-party solutions for scaling and serving Cardano ecosystem applications is Milkomeda, a sidechain network being built by ecosystem developer DC Spark. Milkomeda will serve as an Ethereum compatible sidechain where developers can build applications that are compatible with Ethereum developer tooling and the native Solidity scripting language, opening up a whole slew of application patterns and even ports of existing Ethereum compatible dApps over to the Cardano ecosystem. If I had to draw a parallel between the Ethereum space to drive home what role Milkomeda plays here, I would basically say that Milkomeda is what Polygon is to Ethereum today. It tightly integrates with the main Ethereum network, but it largely has its own security guarantees and operates independently from Ethereum. Milkomeda will have the same sort of relationship to Cardano and will serve as a platform to execute smart contracts triggered from Cardano wallets and tooling using Milkomeda's wrapped smart contracts methodology, which lets user trigger execution of smart contracts on Milkomeda directly from Cardano and existing UI UX elements, which is a great user experience feature. You don't have to learn a whole new thing or have a whole new wallet to use it. Milkomeda has seen success already in testnet launches and it's fast approaching mainnet with several projects building up to that launch to be on Milkomeda at launch day. One project I'm fairly certain will be live on Milkomeda imminently after launch is the first Cardano DEX, Muesli Swap, which is a fantastic order book style exchange if you're not familiar. And I also want to note that Milkomeda will also be integrated with Algorand and Solana down the line, which is a very good thing, by the way, building bridges between Cardano and other networks. And a ton of excitement is abound for Milkomeda, and that's no surprise. By the time this video launches, it's even likely that mainnet for Cardano launch is just about a week or two away, maybe even less. Now, we've covered the three major areas where scalability is starting to get attention in the Cardano ecosystem. The core layer one network scalability solutions, true layer twos like the Orbeez ZK rollup and sidechain efforts like Milkomeda or Milkomeda, however you'd like to pronounce it. This is a burgeoning space for Cardano and other ecosystems. So I would also expect rapid iteration and change in this area but what Cardano really needs to succeed is this degree of flexibility and scalability for DeFi, NFTs, and the high volumes that are going to come from metaverse projects and the identity projects that are being built on Cardano. Are there any other layer twos or side chains that weren't mentioned here or even DeFi projects that need scaling solutions like this that you want to mention that weren't in this video? If so, comment those below. And I want to thank you so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week ahead. And until next time, cheers.